Should you really be waiting for the M5 MacBooks and not the M4 MacBooks? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel. So here we go again. We're all waiting on the M4 MacBooks to come out later this year. We know a couple things. We know they're gonna be AI focused. We also know that they have to give themselves a little bit of room because Snapdragon's breathing down their necks. All right, so I know we're all excited about seeing the new benchmarks on the new M4 MacBooks coming out later this year. And I'll show you an example though. We already kind of know what it is, right? From the iPads. But I know a lot of people all over, you know, people I know, they have M1s and M2s and M3s right now. And they're really fast. They don't need to upgrade really on speed. So, and I actually have an example right here. This is an M2 MacBook Air. It's got the 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigabyte SSD, and it can crunch through 4K editing. It's good enough for me. I don't really need to upgrade. So this bears the question, is there enough changes on the M4 coming up or should you actually wait for the M5? What we know is there's a whole bunch of changes coming to the M5 MacBooks and not so much the M4s. And we're gonna get into this in a second. I think there's like five or six different changes we know are coming to the M5s. So in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you why you may wanna wait for the M5s instead of the M4s. And then at the end of the video, you can make your determination once you watch it. So stay tuned and let's get through all the different features on the M5s. All right, so let's take a step back also. So now on the M4 MacBooks coming out later this year, we know almost certainly that there's gonna be no design changes, really only a CPU change. So take a look at this. This is for Mac Rumors. It says Apple's M4 MacBook Pro lineup, what to expect. Realistically, I'm just gonna scroll down here, design changes. There are no rumors of a design change for the MacBooks Pro at this time. And on top of it, it says Apple has basically redesigned the MacBook in 2012, 2016, and 2021. So following this pattern, we'll see the design tweak in 2025 or 2026. If you think about it, it's not gonna come in the 2000, you know, the M4s, it's gonna come on the M5s as the actual design change. That'll be the four or five year gap where they always change the MacBooks out. So we know that there's gonna be a design change on the M5s for sure. And that's one thing you wanna wait for. So the M5 MacBooks, what are the design changes that they may actually have? Well, we know almost certainly that they're gonna be thinner, all right? And this is more of the MacBook Pros. So currently the MacBook Airs are thin enough, I think, and they're gonna maybe do something with them, but I don't think they're gonna make them too much thinner because of ports and stuff. But the MacBook Pros, a lot of people complain about them, right? I know a lot of people that picked up MacBook Airs because the MacBook Pros were just too thick. They're they basically like bricks, right? So it's hard to carry them around. And Apple's going through kind of this thinness phase right now of all their different devices. And I'll kind of pull up some stuff here to prove that to you. So here it is, hands-on with the new M4 OLED iPad, right? So if you scroll down in here, it says, when it comes to this design, Apple is still offering whatever, but it says, it's basically slimmer and the iPads themselves are super thin. You can see it right here. So they actually made these slimmer and super thin. And these are the new iPads that just came out, right? That's the first hint there. But then not on the iPhone 16 coming out later this year, but on the next iteration, which would be in line with the M5s. If you look at this article, iPhone 17 slim will reportedly feature a new 6.55 inch display. So next, not this year, but next year on the iPhone 17, not the iPhone 16, they're gonna have a slim design as well. So that begs the question, it has to follow through to the M5 MacBook, right? And they're gonna have a design change that year for almost for sure based on the dates. So here we know that this is gonna be a lot thinner. So if you actually want something more of like a portable MacBook Pro, you may wanna wait for the M5 versus the M4. That's all I'm saying there. And then on top of all of this, there's a rumor too. If you look over here, it says all screen M5 MacBook with foldable display and Vision Pro price now rumored at 2026. So this is gonna be a very expensive foldable MacBook, but it's gonna come, they think, during the M5 lineup. So if that's of interest to you, which I'm sure it's not for most people, nobody's gonna spend four or 5,000 on that. But if it's something that you like, you may wanna wait for that as well, because that's gonna be something that you see. So we know that this device is gonna get thinner and we know that the M4 is gonna be the exact same design as it was before. So there's number one. The number two new feature for the M5 MacBooks is gonna be a new chip, obviously. We're gonna have the M5 chip, well, obviously, right? But it's gonna have a new architecture as well. So let me just take a step back here. So we already know the benchmarks on the M4 chips. We see them basically on the iPads and stuff like that. We know where they're gonna be. They're gonna be slightly ahead of the Snapdragon Elites in a lot of cases, and Apple's gonna distance themselves a little bit from them. But in the meantime, Snapdragon's working on another chip, and that iteration is gonna fall somewhere next year or the end of this year. Apple knows this. So Apple's redesigning this M5 chip. They know that they have to take a giant leap here. So we think with the new architecture of the chip, and I'll get into that in a second, and the fact that they know Snapdragon, again, is breathing down their neck, they gotta come out with kind of a, a hitter chip here, right? One that's gonna be not 18 to 20% increase, but maybe 
30 to 40% increase or something like that. They need a powerful chip here because they wanna stay just that much ahead of Snapdragon and it makes total sense. And they're redesigning the chip. It gives them the opportunity to do this. They wanna stay ahead. They cannot fall behind Snapdragon. So this is where the chip on the M4 version is definitely gonna be faster, a bigger jump or bigger iteration than most. And with the chip also, the M4 MacBooks are gonna be the three nanometer process. But if you look over at this article, it says TSMC ahead of schedule and trial production of two nanometer chips. And it's gonna be in the iPhone 17 most likely. So the iPhone 17 is gonna come out with the M5. MacBooks coming out in the same year basically. So we think it's gonna be two nanometer chips also on those MacBooks. So that's gonna be a difference of three nanometer versus two nanometer, which basically means better power efficiency, better thermals, stuff like that. Thinner case maybe, like we said, which is gonna be the design aspect of it. So this is all starting to make more sense. And then we also have all these other rumors, like look at this over here for Mac rumors. Apple's M5 chip dual use design will power future Macs and AI servers. So what this article basically says is they're gonna be using like a three dimensional design in the chips, layering with different wafers and stuff. And it gives it way better power efficiency and way better cooling thermals as well. So this article goes on to say they're actually changing not only the way, you know, not only kind of the basic architecture, but actually it's gonna be a three dimensional change. So overall the chip is changing wildly, right? And we expect this to make the performance change Pretty, pretty pretty, drastic as well, right? Because they have to do it because of Snapdragon. So the number three big change possibly on the M5 MacBooks is gonna be the screens. Now let's just take a step back. With the M4 screens, we know where the M4 is coming out later this year, we know there's no design changes. That's what everyone's saying. So we don't think they're gonna have any OLED screens on them, all right? And everyone wants an OLED screen on their Mac. Well, the iPad's got them, right? So what gives? Well, I guess Apple was just too far into the design cycle. Plus there was kind of, since they came out with the iPads, there's been kind of, you know, not enough stock and stuff I've been reading. So overall, they just kind of scrapped it for the M4s. But for the M5s, we definitely know that it's coming out. Over here, you can see on this article, it says OLED MacBook Pro highly likely to launch in 2026 or 2025 by this company here. So they're basically, and this, is, this would fall right in line with the M5 MacBook. So we know almost... Absolutely, because of the iPad Pros, because of all the phones and stuff coming out now with OLEDs, including I think the SE is gonna have one, this has to come out with one on, on the M5, but the M4 already missed it, I think, so you're not gonna get that on the M4. So this is a huge feature. If you're waiting for it, this might be one you wanna wait for for sure. And then two things that this actually screen solves for them with especially MacBooks and MacBook Pros is the Tandem OLED does a couple things. It's got two different layers, which actually can be, both of them could run with less, less brightness, all right? So basically what that means is the battery will last longer and Apple doesn't have to kind of dial back the battery. They hate to dial back anything. They'll never go less battery than the, the version before them. So they had to wait to figure out this technology, which they did, and that's gonna help them with battery life. Also, burn-in. So with, with obviously like a MacBook or something like this, you, you have a lot more chance of a burn-in when you walk away, your screen sitting up with all your icons on it. And what a dual kind of tandem OLED does is it keeps moving basically back and forth. Screens keep firing up. And it says, at least it says on paper, that it's less likely to burn in, which is perfect for a MacBook. So we know almost positively that they're coming on the M5s. All right, so then number four, change number four. We know that there's gonna be a new camera module on the M M5 MacBooks, all right? Not the M4s, but the M5s. Here's an article right here. It says, new compact cam camera module for M5 MacBooks expected in 2025. Well, what gives here? So we all know that basically the problem right now with Apple's camera modules and stuff like that is they're too thick really for FaceTime, all right? That's the big, that's the big deal. Everyone wants FaceTime on a MacBook. They're just too thick. So if you look at the screen of a MacBook, they're super thin. And when they put these things into like an iPhone and something, the iPhone's actually thicker than the screen here on the MacBook. This is a redesign of it. They're making it smaller, so almost 100% certainly they're going to be coming out with FaceTime also on the 2000 or the M5 MacBook. So keep that in mind. If FaceTime is important to you, to me, I can use my finger. I'm not. It's not a big deal to me. I know for other people, it's just like major for them. But this is going to be a huge change here. And not only that, there's also rumors it could be a 4K camera. Again, trying to stay ahead of Snapdragon and all of their laptops and stuff, they could come out with a 4K one. And at the very least, they're going to upgrade the look and feel of it on the camera, even if they stay at 1080p. So so overall, you're gonna be getting a better camera with FaceTime, almost certainly, on, if you wait till the M5. All right, so the fifth change now is gonna be basically, here's an article you can see here. Let's just start off by saying iPhone 17 Pro to feature Apple-designed Wi-Fi 7 chip, analysts predict. So why would Apple be designing a Wi-Fi 7 chip 
for their iPhone. And this is gonna be the same iPhone that comes out when the M5 MacBook comes out. Well, they're gonna be putting this chip into the MacBook as well, but why would they do this? Well, everyone's thinking, and this is gonna, again, a rumor, but everyone's thinking it's gonna finally have cellular service on it. So you can put in like a SIM card or something. They're adding that to the feature set. And why would Apple do such a thing, all right? Well, think about it. On their iPads, they usually give like a $100 premium for those devices. It probably costs them just a fraction of that, maybe $25 to add that feature. And they're charging like $100 to upgrade to like, you know, from just wide Wi-Fi up to cellular. So I think that's what they're doing here. It's a big money grab, I guess, number one, but it's also what people want. They want to be able to connect multiple different ways and why not do it if they make their own chip? So Apple thinks they can do it cheaper if they do it this way. They don't have to raise their costs as much, but they'll make more profit with an add-on. So it's not going to be included on all of them, but if you want basically Wi-Fi 7, number one, that's the big thing, but also if you want cellular service, this is going to be a huge feature here as well. All right, so for on the M5s as well, we know there's no design changes for the M4 like we talked about. So we think that there's gonna be a new port selection, which could be better. We just don't know yet. There's not a lot of information on it. We just hope that they don't get rid of the headphone jack because that would actually be a disaster, right? But the other things we do know, and there are rumors on it, is obviously improved speakers. Now, I don't know how they can get much better in a thinner design, but Apple never goes backwards on stuff. They usually try to iterate up. So it's gonna probably sound better. They're gonna have maybe more speakers, they're thinking, um, just to get the sound better. And then what else? We can think about the keyboards. So the keyboards are they thinking are gonna stay the same. There's no problems with the keyboards. They had tons of problems in the past. So they're probably gonna keep the keyboards exactly the same there. And then the microphone and stuff will have small upgrades as well. But nothing like, you know, huge or anything like that that would get you to, you know, make, 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 you know, you wait that long for the M5s to come out. It's really gonna be the, all the other things that are gonna make you wait there. And that's the key here. Okay, so did I make your job a lot harder now to decide, right? And I think I did, unfortunately. So the, the moral is here, if you need a computer right now, if you need one right now, don't wait. Get like the, even get the M3 right now, find it on super sale, buy it, and just start doing your job. If you need it for work or school or something, you can't wait a year or even six months from now, so don't worry about that. But if you have an M1, M2, M3 like this, should you, you know, wait for the M4 or the M5? Well, let's think about it for a second. You know, we know Apple came, is coming out with the M4. We know it's going to slightly beat, obviously, or it beat it pretty well. But the Snapdragon, the new Snapdragons that are coming out is, that came out earlier this year. And they have to do that. They have to stay a little bit ahead. But Snapdragon's coming out with that new chip maybe next year or later this year. And it's going to be a beast, right? We know that they're going to go hard at it. Apple knows this, they're gonna to have to come out, they're coming out with a new technology, but Apple doesn't wanna you know, leave anything to chance. They need to stay number one on performance, at least in their eyes, right? So they're gonna come out with a chip that's probably not only 20% faster, but maybe 30 or 40% faster due to the new technologies. And just because they wanna save face, they wanna make sure that they show people, hey, we're still the king. So I think that chip's gonna be super substantial. So if you have a computer that's performing well right now, I might skip the M4 and wait for the M5. Maybe wait later this year to see if the rumors kind of you know hash out and stuff, but I'm pretty sure on four, at least four of them or so, they're 100% almost, 80 or 90, 100%. The other ones are a little bit more of rumors, but still, we know the OLEDs are probably coming out. There's a new camera module for sure. These things are new, but they're also you know kind of baked in already. I mean, people know that these are happening. So you guys make your own decisions. I always say at the end of the day, it's up to you and how you decide, but I think I'm gonna keep my M2 for quite a long time here and be happy with it, although I'm a Mac channel, so I may have to buy something for my channel, but that would be the only reason I'd do it. I'll talk to everybody in the next one. Peace.